Welcome to the New York Auto Show, the car industry's biggest excuse to show off. I'm Sharon Carty, Editor-in-Chief of Autoblog, and we are here at the end of the auto show season, but there's still plenty to see. All right, we're here at the Dodge Charger with Senior Editor Steve Ewing. Steve, um, what is it about this car? Why are we talking about the Charger today? The Charger's just a really cool car, honestly. It's a big, fast, rear-wheel drive American muscle sedan. It's just, it's really kind of cool. And honestly, when the Charger first came out, like, it was super iconic. People fell in love with it. I mean, there are, there are cop cars all over the place at the Charger now. But when it was new, the interior was pretty terrible. Um, it didn't drive particularly well. It was just sort of a big, floaty, you know, go fast in a straight line, and that's about it. That's really all it could do. But as the Charger has gone on with its life cycle, they've uh, very slowly improved things, like better performance, better handling, much better interior. And now, for 15, they've updated the, uh, the front and rear of the faces of the car. Okay, but it's, but it's not all new. It's not all new. It's the same car, pretty much. Just uh, redesigned front end and rear end that bring it more in line with the Dodge family. It's a lot more like the Dart uh, than anything else. And in fact, from the rear end, it's a little like, if you look at it from certain angles, it's a lot like the Dart. The Dart doesn't look bad, so it's okay. Okay, so this is essentially just a way for Dodge to get yeah. money out of people's pockets. It's a refresh. Okay. It's it's in the most literal sense a facelift. And okay. That's about it. But you like it. I like it. The Charger's a cool car. I mean, like I said, there's there's nothing wrong with a V8 rear-wheel drive muscle sedan, and it's you know American and all that stuff. So it's pretty sweet. Thanks for joining us. Anytime. All right, we're at the 2015 Toyota Camry. We're with associate editor Pete Bigelow. What do you think of the car? I think it's a step in the right direction for Toyota. It still looks like a Camry, but they made some design changes that make it look more lively and fun. Right. And, uh, you know, I think if you look back over the last few months, that's what Toyota has been trying to do with their brand. They've been known for a long time for being dependable and economical uh, and maybe kind of boring. So if you look at their commercial during the Super Bowl with the Muppets, uh, you look at the design of this car, I think both of those things speak to the fact that Toyota is trying to be more lively and more fun. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the most popular selling sedan for the last 12 years. We heard some statistic yesterday about like 50 Americans go home with a Toyota Camry every hour. So it's definitely popular. Um, it's just not really all that exciting. When we sit around talking about cool cars, how often does the Toyota Camry come up? The Toyota Camry does not come up. <laughs> I, I think uh, Toyota is kind of in an interesting position where uh, do you want to change a formula that's clearly working, being the best selling car in America for, for 10 plus years running now? Uh, and they kind of, they need to keep up with the Joneses, yet they are the Joneses. Uh, in, in terms of every car in this segment has undergone a big redesign in the last two years. And clearly uh, design has been at the forefront of those, those changes overall. And Toyota needs to make some steps to make sure that the Camry stayed very competitive. So what do you think when people are going in to buy a Toyota Camry, like what do you think their their number one priority is? Like what, are they, what is their shopping list, top of their shopping list? I think that's an interesting question because I think on paper their shopping list is is price, is safety, uh, is dependability. And clearly the, the Camry is a top safety pick from the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety. Uh, and I think it fits the bill on all three of those things. But that's on paper. And when uh, I think when you look at a car, uh, those priorities can change very much so on, does this car look nice? Does this car look fun? Uh, and I think you look at cars like the Mazda 6, uh, maybe the Hyundai Sonata that was just unveiled across the stage over there. And, and those cars, frankly, have looked better than the Camry. Uh, and it, it's very kind of exciting to see the way that the entire segment has shifted toward design in the last two years. So as far as Camrys go, this is definitely way more of a design change than any of us really expected. Um, what do you think of the new design? Absolutely, I think it's, a, it's probably one small step for sedans, one giant step for Toyota. Uh, maybe they don't want to mess with that formula all that much, but uh, you know, it, it's a nice looking car. I don't know if it's nicer than any of the others in the segment at this point. There's nothing wrong with how it looks given this big step forward that we maybe didn't expect. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Okay, well, we're here with uh, Mike Zach. 
our associate editor at Autoblog. Um, we're going to talk about the Hyundai Sonata. The Sonata is um, sort of similar to the Toyota Camry in that it's the same size, same. it's one of their competitors, and the new Camry came out at this show, and now we've got the Sonata. What do you think? Uh, it is, yes, it fits right into that competitive set, and personally, I'm more of a fan of the Sonata's design. I think it's a little bit more aggressive, more athletic, uh, more mature, really, and uh, I think you can make the argument that the Sonata and you know cars like the Fusion, their more striking design has forced Toyota to do this big mid-cycle refresh. So the car is all new. How do you feel about the design? Um, I really like it, and I think the word to use here is it's much more refined. What Hyundai had been doing with their swoopy previous generation cars was really trying to grab people's attention, and now that they have it, they're trying to keep it with something a little bit more toned down that's not quite as controversial. Right, I mean, we've heard that they needed to be more conservative. Yeah, absolutely, and I think this car is a great example of that. So tell me, there's like they named the design something kind of wacky. What is it's it? It's Fluidic Sculpture 2.0, which uh, Fluidic and Sculpture, that's, they don't really make any sense next to each other. It's, it's <laughs> no. definitely some design speak going on there, kind of a marketing play. Um, it, it's kind of meaningless. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, because I don't think this car was sort of put underwater or anything. <laughs> and sculpted. <laughs> and sculpted, exactly. Still just a car. So you've driven the last Sonata. Mm -hmm. Are you looking forward to driving this Sonata? I am. Uh, the last Sonata was a nice car to drive, um, but I expect this car to be a little bit sportier, have a little bit better ride, and the interior should be improved. Hyundai said they really focused on interior space and ergonomics, and they've also been testing the car over at the Nuremberg Ring to uh, give it you know, a much more sporty feel while on the road. Which is, could be good or bad, depending on what kind of driver you are. Exactly. You know, this car, a lot of commuters are going to be buying this car, so they might not like a stiffer ride with this more punishing suspension. So it'll be interesting to see how far they went with that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if it hurts your kidneys when you go over a pothole. Exactly. But the upsides of that, of course, are you're going to have a car that's much sharper. Uh, you know, the, the, the steering is going to be much more responsive. It's just going to handle better on the road. Well, thank you very much, Mike, for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, we're here at the Nissan Murano with uh, West Coast editor Mike Carley, and we're going to chat a little bit about this car. Mike, what do you think of the new Nissan Murano? I am, uh, I've been a big fan of the Murano ever since day one. The car came out in what, 2003, first generation, and uh, now we're looking at the brand new 2015 third generation model, and uh, it still follows the same exact format, which is front wheel drive or all wheel drive, 3.6 liter V6. Um, you know, it's based on the Maxima, so I've always looked at it like driving like a tall Maxima. And I like it. I think they've done a really, really good job. So it's pretty close to the concept, right? Like, I mean, they, they're taking something and making a pretty bold design out of this car. Yeah, exactly. What they've done is the very first generation uh, Murano came out and it was unlike anything else the market had seen before. It had new, exciting styling while everything else was boring and bland. And the second generation was more of an evolution. They worked on the interior, but they didn't really do anything with the outside. This time they went back, third generation said, we're gonna make the outside bold, and we're gonna really bring the up, you know, interior upscale. And uh, it's finally, it's a good looker now, once again. And uh, the interior is almost like, I don't want to say Infinity-like, but it's really moved up scale. So what do you like about the styling, or do you like the styling in this? Uh, I like the front of it. I like these uh, reverse boomerang headlights. I like the aggressive nose. It says, it's got presence. I like, you know, the hook on the back, the C-pillar. I like how they blacked it out. It's, they've got this floating roof. It's not like the GTR with a blackened A-pillar, but uh, it works really, really well in the Murano. Um, you know, it, it carries the design through from front to the back. So what I don't, don't like, like yeah. <laughs> I don't like the wheels. These are the optional larger wheels. I don't like the black painted spokes. I think it's, uh, it's overdone, and I think it, it almost cheapens the overall look. Right. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the interior. Um, it's this one that we see on stage is all white. I would, uh, let's consider this a show interior. Okay. Uh, you know, you and I both have kids. There is no way I'd ever order an interior with cream on cream on cream. Right. Um, it looks but good it looks for the cool. cameras, but after about a day and a half, six milkshakes and some soccer cleats, it's gonna look really lousy. Uh, it has gone seriously upscale though. The materials are nicer, uh, better touch, better buttons. Um, they've got their anti-gravity seats, whatever they call them, that uh, feel good under the derriere. So who do you see as the customer for this car? Uh, I would say probably an empty nester. It's an interesting car where it fits. It's almost like the, the Pathfinder family that the kids have gone away now and they want something upscale, sportier, a little smaller than a Pathfinder. This is a five-seater. You know, it's a really upscale Nissan and it's nice. Are you looking forward to test driving it? 
I'm very much looking forward to test driving it. You know, the, the nice thing about the Murano is the 3.0 liter V6 has got some spunk. It's got a CVT, which typically I'm not a huge CVT fan, but because the engine's got low end torque, it gets off the line, and uh, Nissan's done a whole bunch of work on this one. I believe the fuel economy's uh, improved by almost double digits, almost 10% fuel economy. So we're talking four miles per gallon on the open road, which means you get out there, it's got more pickup, more pep, it's lighter now, and uh, you know it's a win-win across the board. And the other thing is the styling sometimes affects outward visibility. You know, the designers work so hard to make these things look cool, they forget the fact that you got to put someone behind the driving wheel, it's got to look over their shoulder and can't see out the seat pillars. Right. Um, we've seen cars like that in the past. So you got to get behind the wheel, see how the change is. You know, improves fuel economy, does it affect drivability? Right. You know, improves styling, does it affect visibility? And it's a hit or miss. And the, you know, very few automakers are able to nail the complete package. How important is it to them? It's a high volume car for them. It's very important for them. And it's a very visible car for them as well. And the car is now for the first time being built in the United States. Americans like American built cars. So this is now an American car. There you go. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So there you have it. Not the most exciting show, but still a couple of important debuts. I'm Sharon Carty with Autoblog.